Where do babies come from? Uh, 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 um, from people. Just a few years ago, scientists discovered that we get all our cell organelles from the ovum. Before this, scientists had thought that some of the cell organelles would have come from the sperm. But they later found out that the sperm only provides the genetic material to make up the zygote and nothing else. Yes, that is all that the sperm provides. Half of the genetic material and it's done. Yikes. The sperm is just as selfish as the men who make it. One organelle that is extremely important to the functioning of the cell is the mitochondria, what many people now call, say it with me now, the powerhouse of the cell. Hey, did you know that the mitochondria actually contains its own genetic material? Yes, 37 genes to be exact. The chloroplast in plants also contains its own genetic material, but plants are a topic for another day. Because all our mitochondria is inherited from the maternal ovum, all our mitochondrial genes have a maternal lineage. In fact, I can confidently say that your cells have more of your mom in them than your dad. Doesn't matter if you are male or female. The study of mitochondrial genes has picked up pace a lot in the recent times, leading to the famous discovery of the mitochondrial Eve. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mitochondrial what? The use of the word Eve in mitochondrial Eve is actually some sort of misnomer. In fact, it's actually a little bit unfortunate that the name Eve was chosen to refer to this important ancestral trait. Because, well, the name Eve has certain religious beliefs associated with it. This name Eve has caused some sort of misunderstanding around this discovery. A more accurate name would have been the most recent mitochondrial ancestor of every human. But I guess that is too much of a mouthful. So the scientists who published this work decided to just go with mitochondrial Eve. I guess it does have a ring to it, doesn't it? By studying the genomes of more than 1,200 indigenous people living in the southern part of Africa today, the team pieced together the lineage of one of the oldest DNA lineage to date, a collection of genes called L0, which is passed down maternally through the mitochondria, has survived remarkably unchanged for hundreds of thousands of years. By tracking where the L2 lineage first split, the researchers believed that they may have pinpointed precisely where the first carrier of the L0 mitochondrial gene might have lived for thousands of years. Mitochondrial DNA account for just a fraction of the genome, with the bulk of the DNA actually locked up inside the nuclear of the cell. However, while the nuclear DNA is inherited from both parents and is recombined after every generation, the mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from the mother and can remain unchanged for tens of thousands of years. Because of this, the mitochondrial DNA, also called the mitogenome, is a key tool for tracking genetic history. The L0 mitochondrial genome is particularly important because all living people with this particular genome are believed to have descended from their maternal lineage from a woman who first carried this sequence. This hypothetical woman is what was called the mitochondrial Eve. Yes, we live, we learn people. The L0 lineage is now predominantly found in the Hoysan people who are indigenous to the southern part of Africa. Numerous other indigenous Africans have also been shown to carry the mitochondrial DNA that descends from this lineage, but with a subtle variation. Ooh, I think I wanna get my mitochondrial genes tested now to see if I am part of this special L0 mitochondrial Eve lineage. By comparing these variations from group to group, geneticists can piece together a general timeline of when these ancient genetic lineages diverged. The dataset acquired in this recent research created one of the most accurate snapshots ever taken of how ancient mitochondrial lineages are dispersed around southern Africa. This distribution data allowed the team to estimate where and when mitochondrial Eve's descendants first split into genetically distinct groups. The author Vanessa Hayes, a geneticist 
from the Govan Institute of Genetic Research in the University of Sydney said that scientists have known that humans originated in Africa roughly 200,000 years ago. But what hadn't been figured out until this research was done is where the exact homeland was. What was exciting about this paper is that we could use the mitogenome and the L0 lineage in particular to trace our human ancestors back to what is possibly the birthplace of mankind. So what our genomic data showed us is our ancestors appear to have lived and thrived for 70,000 years in a region without any need to explore further. This region, we believe, to be the Mahari Khari Okavanga region, which spans most of Botswana today. The estimation of the exact time period when the mitochondrial Eve might have lived was estimated to be between 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. This was before human beings started migrating out of Africa, meaning that every human being can trace back their origins through their mother's mother, mother, and eventually end up to this hypothetical woman called the mitochondrial Eve. A very, very distant ancestor to all of us, but a common ancestor nonetheless. Whoa, isn't this interesting? In fact, they estimated that the mitochondrial Eve could be the 16,000th great-grandmother to all of us. There is evidence that this woman lived in sub-Saharan Africa near the Makgadi Gadi or Kavango wetland in Botswana. It is important to note, however, that the mitochondrial Eve, or the most recent common mitochondrial ancestor, is unlikely to have been the only female ancestor that we have who lived at that time. Many other women who might have lived at this time may have had descendants. However, the mitochondrial Eve is the most recent direct line maternal ancestor that we all share. This is an important distinction to note. So, do all humans descend from the very same mitochondrial Eve? Yes, these scientists believe that. The evidence found thus far show that the mitochondrial Eve is the most recent ancestor. So, why is this theory important? Mitochondrial DNA is interesting to genetic genealogists because we can use it in a lot of the genealogy research, especially when studying along the maternal line. The mitochondrial DNA does mutate slowly, but these scientists have designed sensitive genetic tests that can detect these subtle changes. However, some scientists are skeptical of these findings. For example, Chris Stringer, a human origin expert at the Natural History Museum in London, say that scientists should be cautious when using modern genetic distribution to infer where ancient populations lived more than 150,000 years ago, especially in a continent as large as Africa. He added that because the present study follows only the sequence of maternal inherited genetic code, its findings may not come capture the full picture of humankind's fast travel around Africa. The best available evidence of the nuclear DNA suggests that multiple distinct genetic founder populations might have lived throughout various parts of the continent, giving the modern humans several homelands. Skeptics have argued that focusing on a small bit of the genome or on one region or on one stone tool or even on one critical fossil cannot capture the full complexity of our collective human mosaic origins. Another thing that this study fails to capture is the other half of our genetic lineage, i.e. the male half. Looking at the male inherited Y chromosome, the most divergent in extant humans are found in West Africa, not South Africa, suggesting that the Y chromosome ancestors might have originated from West Africa. The authors of this study do acknowledge that humans might have had several homelands. L0 is simply the most well-preserved lineage, especially thanks to its strictly maternal provenance. So, while researchers may be closer to pinpointing the little Eden where the mitochondrial Eve started her family, I guess it's still too early to say that we have found our homeland. However, I think it's safe to say that with the evidence we have thus far, 
you and me, all of us, somehow all originated from Africa. If you like what we do here at The African Scientist and would like to support us, why don't you buy us a coffee using this link or maybe use this link to support us through Tiny Pesa. And please get in touch with our super awesome social media manager, James, using the links for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hey, thank you for coming along. This is The African Scientist, science from an African perspective.